Welcome back to episode three. On this episode of the Electric MX-5, I'm gonna be looking at the underside of the car, cleaning it all down, finding all the hidden bits of rust, which quite a few of you guys have pointed out locations to check. Um, I've got a look at the driver's side sill. That's definitely gonna need some repair work. I'm definitely gonna to need to cut that back and start looking at welding a plate in. And then I'll get that finished on episode four, because it's quite a bit of work to get on under here. We're gonna head upstairs and see Josh, see how he's getting on with the CAD design work and have a look at some of the weight distribution because quite a few guys have asked, how is the weight gonna be distributed? So we've had a bit of a, a change around, so we'll have a quick look through that. And they're gonna fit our Powerflex bushes that they've sponsored us. And they're gonna do a tech talk on the Hyper 9 motor to go in a bit more depth, how it works, the voltage ranges, the performance and the weights, etc. So as normal, hit the subscribe button and let's go. And these off before. Right, that's giving you a quick overview of the process I've got to go through to clean up this car. I've still got a lot of work to do on this to get it all cleaned up, get rid of all this little bits of surface rust before it's etched primed in those sections and then the whole car gets under sealed. We're now gonna move on to tackling this outer seal. We'll clean back all the rust on the MX-5. As you can see, we've got quite a hole. Now we've got clean metal up here, but I guarantee you the fact that the rust is there means it probably carries on up to here and down to here. It's always a lot worse inside on these than it is, does look on the outside. So some bubbles on the outside normally means it's absolutely screwed inside. Let's get cutting, shall we? Finally got to the point where we haven't got rust here. Finally. It's actually come out fairly well. Um, I've cleaned it all down, as you can see, it's pretty shiny. I've managed to get rid of all the rust. Um, probably gonna go over it a couple more times with the wire wheel, and then I'll etch primer it. I've had to cut a little plate out on the back of here, so this will be put in after I put this plate back in. i will just rebuild this section. Um, right now, we're gonna head upstairs and see Josh, see how he's got on with the CAD work, and have a look at some of the weight distribution. And I'll come back to this on episode four. Have a quick look over the 3D work he's been doing and see what's the change since we last came up. Um, we've taken the decision to move more weight over the rear of the car. Um, so I think Josh and I'm just going to quickly show you the setup he's done on the rear and what he's put there. Yeah, so as Chris said, we've actually moved the charger from uh, the right at the front of the car, which is just underneath, and the DC DC converter, um, which is also over the front axle. So we've moved that to the rear now. 
So that's that's 25, 30 kilos over the rear end now, which is a, which is a lot better in terms of weight distribution. Um, and it just tidies the, the, the look of the front end, so it's just going to be one nice battery box and the BMS, so it's going to look really tidy as well. Um, can you uh, zoom in on the uh, the bit you've done, yeah. just so we can quickly see the layout? As we have got battery, battery charger, DC DC, and we've got a little junction box, I think, haven't we? Yeah. So all of this is going to have captive nuts on, so everything's going to be easy accessible. You're not going to need nuts, spanners, ratchets, all that, um, and everything's going to be removable from the top hatch if you ever need to service it or remove anything in the future. So everything's going to be easily maintainable. So that's the hatch that's behind the seats, isn't it? I think yeah, there's a, that's it. a little panel. Uh, silver panel you can just pop off, cool, cool. and you can get access to all of that. Fantastic news, fantastic news. So what we're going to do now is Josh is going to quickly zoom out on this and I'm going to talk through the weights uh, and how it's distributed throughout the car, so the weight of each, each item, so just so you guys can start to understand that how the distribution is going to be on this vehicle. So we have a 140 kilograms battery pack complete, motor, gearbox, controller comes to 75 kilograms and the battery charger DC to DC plate comes to 30 kilograms, giving us a total of 245 kilograms. Thanks to Paraflex for sponsoring this build. Finally, our Paraflex bushes have arrived. Let's have a look in the box, shall we? Lots of bits. Diff bushes, lots of exhaust bushes, Paraflex. But the funny thing is, it's an EV. It doesn't have an exhaust anymore. Right then, I suppose I should go through this now, work out what goes with which arm and get started. So I now have everything laid out. As you can see, there's a fair few to fit. Bushes come neatly boxed and every one says along the top what it's for. So this is front wishbones which is this one, get a fitting guide, very important assembly, waterproof grease, and you get your inserts and your bushes. Now they've actually redone, well not redone the design, but the Paraflex design actually has a cross hatch internally, which is really good because it maintains and holds the grease long term, so at least in a couple of years they're still free and they still move and you haven't pushed all the grease out when you insert the pins. Right then, let's start getting these fitted I suppose. Now time to get our first set of bushes fitted. See if I do this right, shall we? But I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments if I don't. So we have our relevant bushes. What we've done when we clean these out, we've cleaned out all the bore holes just so the bushes press pressing easily. Now go directly off the instructions. You insert these into the arms without any grease on the outside. Once they're in, you then lube up the inside of your bush and insert your piece of metal. As you can see, that wasn't too bad really. Because we did all the prep work up front, cleaned everything down, the bushes went in really, really easily just using the vise. Now make sure you use the PTF lubricant they send with the bushes. It's not there to help you put them in, it's there to keep them lubricated long term once they're fitted to the vehicle. Now let's head over and do a tech talk on the Hyper 9 motor system. This is now our tech time. Tech time is something I'm going to add into our little other episodes to try and cover some key aspects of the build and go into a bit more depth about certain components we're using. Also, I don't want to throw it all into one episode and get everyone bored. This is our net gain Hyper 9, as we showed in the first episode. This is a, I think it's classed as an SRIPM, uh, which is a synchronous reluctance internal permanent magnet motor, 95% uh, efficient, roughly and it's a three phase AC. It's pretty much a fancy fixed magnet motor, which I'm sure someone will tell me off for saying that. Um, and it comes as part of a kit, which just includes the controller, coolant plate, and some other bits, which we'll go into some more depth on in a minute. Now this motor is 
95 kilowatts peak. We class it as 80 kilowatts peak because that peak of 95 is for a very, very short period of time. Uh, minimum voltage is 62 volts, maximum is 132. It does up to 8,000 RPM. Uh, and it weighs 58 kilos, so it's quite heavy. Uh, you can't lift this. I can't lift this by myself. If I do, I put my back out. Um, it does regenerative braking as it's AC, and it's about 220 newton meters of torque. Now, you get it as a kit, which comes with, as I said, the motor, the controller, IO looms. Uh, you get a couple of other connectors, and you get a uh, contactor. So let's have a quick look at the controller. So this is controller slash inverter. So the benefit with the Hyper 9 net gain system is you have a controller inverter as one piece. You don't have to have a separate vehicle control unit. It's all done within here. Um, so this also takes in your throttle, brake signals, um, gear selection, so drive, neutral, reverse, all that sort of stuff. You've got your negative and positive battery just here, as well as your three phase outputs to go to the motor. And then that's your main IO loom which is a 12 volt input. You also have ignition live, CAN bus, lots of things like that. Now this is really good because it will also interface with our Orion battery management system. And if the Orion tells it it's getting low on charge or the batteries are getting too warm, it will help, it will tell this information on the CAN bus. This will then limit the motor down so you don't do any damage to the batteries. It's aluminum on the back. So you can buy it with this coolant plate, which you basically apply sealant to, you seal it onto the back of here. Um, we recommend running it with coolant all the time because you don't want it starting to limit if it gets a bit too warm. It's no fun if things start limiting down when you're having a bit of fun. This is the IO loom that comes with it. Um, it probably looks fairly daunting to a lot of people. It's a 32 pin, I think, amp cell connector. Maybe slightly more than that, but it looks like a 32 pin. Um, it's a lot of wires. It's not that bad. Once you look through the wiring diagram and you work out what you need, what goes where, and you split it all up and label it, it's not that big a task. It really is okay. Don't get put off by a bit of wiring. As I said, part of the kit, you get a little relay to ignition live. You get a couple of connectors, which is your temperature and your encoder. Now, I don't think it's classed as a encoder on a DC fixed magnet motor. Um, basically, what it does is that will tell the controller at what point the motor is, so where the motor is at any point. So then it, we've also got a serial to USB connector as well, which you then use with your IO loom and your connector, so you can then do programming. So it has a really good software with this that allows you to set everything up. So you can set up your throttle, you can set up your brake, you can set up your regen amount, um, you can set up your display output data. So this will actually output Canvas um, for a couple of different display options they offer, which is really, really good for different vehicles. Now we're going to take that display output out and we're going to put it into another little computer to then reanimate the original display, but they do do aftermarket displays for this. Um, now, NetGain, who produced the Hyper 9 motor, they have a series of dealers worldwide. So you can talk to any of them worldwide. So wherever you are located in the world, um, as I know we have a lot of viewers all over the world, you can probably get this in your country. Um, you could probably get support, support in your country to do it. Also, have a look at the forums. There's loads of these have been used over the years. Um, because they're quite a common motor. So I'd recommend you have a look on the forums. The other benefit is with the B-face, which is a type of face on this motor and the keyway, um, it's a really common face, basically. Um, there's loads and loads of adapter plates to go onto original gearboxes that have been produced for the B-face. Um, as the AC50s and all those other motors, the slightly older motors, had the same face. And when NetGain brought this motor out, they kept the same face to make everyone's life as easy as possible. Now, please leave a comment below if there's anything else you'd like me to cover. Um, so then I can add it into the next Tech Time on another episode. Um, and if we keep doing that, at least I can make sure I try and cover all the questions you guys have. Now, as normal, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up, maybe share us on social media, and make sure you come back for the next episode. Thank you for watching.